It is a short flight on a Chinook resupply helicopter from the main Australian base in Tarrancourt to patrol base Samad. But when you arrive in the arid expanse around the base, you quickly get a sense of the isolation and remoteness of this small outpost. On this flight, fuel for the camp's generators and a box of fresh fruit are being unloaded, along with a few newly arrived soldiers. The only vehicles are those issued to the Afghan National Army, and this truck, recently destroyed in an IED attack, has not been replaced and lies abandoned outside the base. With no vehicles, the patrolling around this area is all on foot and supplies and replacements arrive by helicopter and the occasional road convoy. Sergeant James Stewart briefs the new arrivals. You have your cams on, weapon within in close proximity. We usually sit out in the admin area and have it in, the, uh, in our little holder there. These guys are pretty friendly and there's no real need to kind of get around with our weapons all the time. Um, they kind of ask us questions why we why we've got weapons and we don't, they don't, we don't trust them, so we uh, kind of try and stick as uh, clean as we can sometimes with pistols, depending on the threat. Security, okay, we'll conduct our own security throughout the day. We'll do radio picket and then just people roving around checking out what's going on. Uh, okay, actions on stand two, if we do uh, receive a direct attack, uh, all of our security forces will stand to in each of the, uh, the towers. We'll have two in each tower. We'll have our uh, uh, engineer brick uh, and the overflow people will be moved to the HABs and be act as like a QRF or an illumination party as required. Um, we've done that before, come out here, fired a loom in support of kind of stuff that's out there and that's worked quite well. Okay, in the last couple, uh, just an up ops update for the last 24 hours. We, uh, we were meant to patrol yesterday due to the ANA not wanting to patrol. We had a new change over their hierarchy. Uh, they restrict themselves to three patrols a week. Um, so we were meant to go out yesterday to do a patrol, but hence we stayed behind and uh, we're kind of trying to fight for work out there, trying to, trying to get them to get outside the wire. They're quite reluctant at the moment because they're a newer group. Before that we'd uh, had a couple of fighting patrols. We went out and we were engaged by uh, uh, some small arms fire from about 500 metres out in uh, Sork Magab, which is an area where the insurgents safe haven. And we pushed out to that area just to let them know that we were there. Previous to that, we'd had uh, a couple of contacts on the river uh, bounding our, our area that we'd been in previously to this new area and uh, we've killed uh, three uh, insurgents in the last couple of weeks. Uh, all in total we've had seven contacts and about I think 29 cash fines in the last three to four months. So this is a quite active area. Um, this little slice of the ground here is fill it relatively quiet. It's just when we go down to the green that everything starts to happen. That's all I've got unless you've got any questions. The base itself is built from the ubiquitous HESCO blast barriers, wire mesh and canvas buckets filled with earth. The Australians live in quarters made of these barriers, covered over with a reinforced roof to protect against mortars and rockets. A few shipping containers provide basic facilities for washing and a single satellite phone for the soldiers to call home. Rudimentary watchtowers are built on the HESCO walls. When we first occupied this base, we came through and we cleared all the way up. Yeah. We cleared right up towards, there's like a rocky, there's like a ridge line that comes out. We cleared up through there and we did yeah. um, got a couple of weapons and RPGs and all kinds of stuff. And then we came back and occupied the base. Since then, we do the other side, which is not really that active. It's just got IEDs. This side we go out. Most times we get hit yeah. in the green, and then they bug out that way. So we've had a fair bit of action out that way. Yeah. And we did a patrol to the back of the mountains up there. Um, that mountain looks really small from here, but 
it took us a long time to get up there. <laughs> it's about five, six k's, and then it was all walking uphill. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we we're just absolutely shagged trying to walk up there. Yeah, yeah. It's like something out of Indiana Jones. Last time they had two sections out there. Yeah. Sergeant they, Stewart they points out the where the Taliban usually come from. And they, they get brassed up a fair bit, and we'll react to that. But um, yeah. yeah, that's that's there, and that's the main gunfire. And then these guys from here will either shoot to support or um, we'll go out and do something, catch them off guard, ambush them, um, block them. There is only 20 Australian soldiers at this base. So how many? The number of Afghans they are mentoring fluctuates. Uh, we've got uh, 20 Australians at the yep. moment. Yeah, 20, 20 Australians and one interpreter. Yep. Um, we just got rid of a, a brick of four today. They went back to Charlie Company and they were out here yep. whilst the guys went on holidays and they came back and now they've sent back to their original organisation. Oh, okay. Um, yep. How many A and A? There's between 40 to 60. It fluctuates. Some okay. people go A. Some of them go AWOL. Um, they get reinforcements. They yeah. they fluctuate. Um, yeah, and some of them go back to TK and yeah. Yeah, and some are down there. So it's it's hard to kind of gauge how many exactly. But yeah, yeah. between 40 and 60 at the moment. These Afghan soldiers have only just arrived in Samad and are reluctant to patrol. So there's um. These guys, have you been out on patrol with them? Yeah. Uh, we have done a couple of basic patrols, but generally the officers will stay behind and it'll just be the soldiers that'll go out. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. so we trying to mentor them to kind of get up there. They're kind of a bit reluctant with everything to patrol, um, to, you know, to get in there. So but we're working on that at the moment. Yeah. So your mentoring basically consists of um, taking them out on patrols? Yeah, to, to plan with them beforehand. Yeah. So we'll yeah. go in and plan and talk about the patrol, try yeah. and get them to come up with a plan. We'll get them out there, try and get them to steer us where they want to go. Um, generally, it ends up us kind of leading them slightly. Yeah. And then when, when stuff happens, it's like getting them, mentoring the process of them to get up there to do the job, mm. um, to get up and exploit, to push through, and then to conduct the reorg and then come back. So that's part of that's difficult. They want to get there. They want to shoot as many rounds as they can, and then they want to just bug out, and they haven't gone through and cleared anything. Mm. They haven't confirmed anything. Mm. Um, so we're trying to get them to do that. And that, that comes quite difficult. Yeah. Uh, and they've got, you know, the, the, during Ramadan it was we've got to get back because um, you know we haven't eaten and yeah. it's 12 o'clock. It's too hot. Um, you know, and then there's always something that comes comes up where they got to get back because they don't work more than three to four hours in the day. So. Yeah. This Afghan water truck bears the scars of a recent attack. The Afghan driver was killed by a rocket-propelled grenade. There are so few Australians here that when these men go on patrol, only three remain in the base to quite literally hold the fort with the Afghans. Sergeant Stewart and his men will spend their whole deployments in Samad. They will be here in this basic and Spartan patrol base when the winter covers the surrounding mountains in snow. Eventually, this base will be handed over to the Afghans. But until then, the 20 Australians here will continue in their isolated and lightly defended base to control this one small part of this vast and ancient landscape. The Australians maintain a network of patrol bases in Uruzgon, which are constantly connected to the main base in Tarangkot by Chinook helicopters. On this flight, we're heading to the patrol base Mirwais, home to US, Afghan and Australian soldiers. On arrival, supplies and personnel are unloaded. The landing zone is situated on a hillside above the base, and the helicopter spends as little time as possible on the ground before departing. The Mirwai's forward operating base is spread out on a hillside that overlooks the village. Watchtowers constantly monitor the surrounding streets and buildings. Um, we're just maintaining security and uh, if any locals or um, A&P or even A&A come to the front gate, 
uh, we'll basically radio through and let him know that we have uh, visitors or any other problems like that. The security situation facing the Australians based here is explained. I mean, IEDs are the weapon of choice, so we could walk 100 metres outside the patrol base and come across an IED. But as far as small arms attacks, yeah, it's pretty rare. Okay. Um, that contact two days ago yeah. was just over the other side of this um, ridge here. Okay. And uh, I don't know if the sun's any good, but right. yeah, three hours worth the A and A were fighting in there, so. Really? Yeah. That's the biggest we've seen since we've been here. Okay. You know, we've had a few um, short skirmishes, yeah. um, contact with Taliban, but that was prolonged. Okay. Yeah. And that was probably how far away? Uh, from here, about six and a half, seven k's. Okay. Yeah. And it was uh, a couple of ANA got wounded, didn't they? Yeah, there was one shot in the shoulder, one shot in the uh, upper leg. Right. And there was a there was a twelve year old boy as well that got caught up in the fire, and okay. uh, he was evacuated with those two ANA. Yeah. yeah. So that sort of distance, six k's away from here, is that sort of. Uh, you know, is that normal for patrols to be engaged that far away or from here? Or? Yeah, that's that's probably more common. Yeah. Um, for ours, they've been uh, just up up probably about uh, yeah seven to eight k's up the valley. Further was yeah. our first contact. Yeah. Was one of the sections. Another one was you know, further afield. Yeah. But. Uh, Generally, this, this section of green zone just in front of us, yeah. uh, it's been fairly benign. The yeah. population are permissive. Yeah. Um, it's been quite successful, really, the, the ANA interaction, and also the, the police here, yeah. interaction with the locals, and security's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's only when you push out. Yeah. It's, uh, there's a line pretty much halfway through Niazi yeah. on the other side of that, it's where it's a little more non permissive. And it's pretty much the same thing if you go northeast. There's a point where you cross over into different trouble boundaries, right. and uh, yeah, you start to see a little bit more action. The green zone around the base is patrolled regularly. There was not many people. We probably only saw about 20 to 30 people out there, which is weird. Yeah. So I don't know it's if people are heading away for winter time or what was the deal but it was real quiet um, all and all the green zones completely changed as well so there's barely any crops out there it's just all fresh ploughed fields so it's just a, <laughs> that was a long patrol we had it was just under 11 and a half k's and it's just walking on loose soil the whole way so it's yeah. it pretty annoying <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty uneventful patrol. The ANA did good. The yeah. Zabet that was leading the patrol was uh, real good. So. Was that him that we were talking to? Yeah, yeah. Was him, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's probably dude. one of the better ones that are yeah. around. So, yeah. yeah, it was pretty uneventful. We heard we did hear bursts of uh, um, heavy machine gun fire from, like, down the end of the valley, but it was pretty far off. So, and it wasn't. It was heading out that way. Could hear it hitting the mountains. Yeah. So I don't know who that was, but. Mm, sound like a 50 cal machine gun, which is too good. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it was a very uneventful patrol. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Do you think? Yeah. No, I was just saying that it's back to the same area where you had your first contact. We actually yeah, walked past. We walked Valley. straight past it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You still see all the damage to the trees from all the HE. Yeah, from where the ID was blown. Yeah. So, so, how long ago was that? Um, it was in July, start of July. Yeah. Or well, mid-July, actually. Yeah. yeah. So that was a while ago. Um, that was a night patrol we were on, and it was just a chance encounter, pretty much. We were just just stopped yeah. in the shadows, and they pretty much walked straight past us yeah. and got smashed. So. Yeah, about 70 meters. From yeah, it was plane. close. It was real close. Yeah, real close. So we ended up killing three of them and yeah. uh, wounding another one. Yeah. It wasn't too bad out of five. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. What since we got into that contact down there, the yeah. valley really quietened down. We used to get targeted with IEDs like just a few hundred metres out into the green zone there because okay. we're pretty restricted with where we can go. Yeah. There's only a few spots that we can actually break into the green zone and they used to target them. But it's really, it has died down since then. Um, there hasn't been too much. There was 
about a month ago there was two a &A soldiers killed in the bazaar who were blown up by an IED. But apart from that and the contact the other day, it, it has it been pretty familiar. quiet. It's noticeably yeah. quietened down. All the insurgents seem to have pushed further east, out down towards Sarab. Yeah. So, which is sort of good for us. The wider picture of the area of operations is detailed in the command post. Basically got responsibility from Kudus all the way up, one through the Karmiston Valley, all the way up into friggin' Kushkadir, up in here, this ADA, US Special Forces up in there, but that, that's a massive area for a group that's the smallest that we've, we've had, that's, you know, been whittled away. So, we're talking about two platoons, you know, some vehicles, some engineers, and, and that's that's our area. And that's the whole of 2nd Kandak's area as well, so logistically there's a lot of yeah. everything that's on. The Australian soldiers here have built this memorial to their mates who have been killed operating from this base. Three months to go. There you go, eh? <laughs> yep. Can't wait to get home. <laughs> have a beer. This is how most Australians will leave me, Weiss. I dash up through the downdraft of a Chinook on the hill above the base. And a flight through the mountain passes to Tarrant Cod. Patrol Base Mirwais was handed over to the Afghan and US forces in November 2012.